Hello all, myself Vikas. I'm a data scientist. Today we are going to learn about KNN machine learning algorithm. So brief introduction about me. I have around five years of experience in data science and analytics field. And I have a specialization in both machine learning and deep learning. And I have worked on various domains such as uh, finance, manufacturing, retail, healthcare, and others. Today, as I will be, we will go through the introduction first. Then I will uh, tell you some theoretical example. Then we will see the advantages and disadvantages of the KNN algorithm. Then we will uh, head to the real world problem by using KNN, how we have to solve it. So what is uh, KNN? KNN is nothing but K nearest neighbor. So KNN is a supervised learning method. It was first developed by Elvin Fix in 1951. KNN is suitable for both classification and regression problems. And KNN is also known as a lazy learning algorithm. Why? Because uh, it has no specialized training phase. That means there is no training time is required. So we, we can directly test it. And it is also known as non-parametric non learning algorithm. It that uh, nothing but it does not assume anything about the underlying data. So let us uh, head to the one example. I have taken a classification example. As I earlier told, it can be used both for regression and classification. So KNN is nothing but it groups the algorithm which has uh, nearby properties. So for example, I have a class A and class B here. Class A are uh, represented by stars and class B is represented by a triangle, which is in a green color. Green color. So let us assume that a new data point comes in here and uh, uh, the uh, box in yellow, the question mark. We have to predict uh, to which class it belongs. Okay, so whether it belongs to class A or class B. So for example, first I have taken an instance of K equal to three. Means K equal to three, nothing but the nearest number of neighbors is equal to three. So uh, when I choose the K equal to three, it will calculate the distance to the point of the yellow uh, nearer to it. So it will take uh, first three uh, elements which are very nearer to uh, the data point. So uh, let us uh, see how it is going to calculate the distance. Uh, distance is calculated based on Euclidean and Manhattan and there are many others. These two are popular. So Euclidean is nothing but the distance between, for example, if I say x1 and x2, there are two points. So the distance between x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. So this is nothing but the Euclidean distance. Manhattan distance is nothing but the mod of x2 minus x1 plus y2 minus y1. So based on these uh, two distances, it will calculate. Uh, so for example, if I say k equal to three, so first it will calculate uh, the distance between the star and the yellow point, then remaining two uh, triangles. So for example, if I say k equal to three, then I can surely say that it belongs to uh, the triangle classes, class B. Uh, why? Because the class B has a majority here. So now if I say uh, next I increase K equal to 7. So now you, you can see the uh, class A has four numbers and class uh, B has uh, three numbers. So majority is with the class A. So now I can say that uh, the point belongs to class A. So this is a tricky point in this uh, KNN algorithm, how to select a K. So selection of the K is critical. Uh, so this is how it works and this K can be selected using some different parameters like hyperparameter tuning and other things. Okay, so this is about the classification example. Uh, let us uh, head to some advantages of uh, the KNN alg algorithm. Okay, so KNN is easy to understand and put into action. It, it can be put into very quick action and there is no explicit training required in KNN algorithm and all the work is done during the prediction only. So you don't need to have any training time required. So it will just assume and it will test and to start to do the prediction. And one more uh, advantage is that new data can be added seamlessly. This is in turn ensures that there is no retraining of a new model. So even if new data comes like, for example, if I say after one month, a new data came from the customer, then we have to test it. Then there is no need of uh, training the model. As I earlier said that there is no training required. So we can easily re uh, retrain of a new model without any training. Then it is an ideal choice for distance metrics. Since there are numerous distance metrics to, to choose from like Euclidean, Manhattan, Hamming distance, etc. These all are nothing but the distance measurement between the point and the new point. So let us head to the disadvantages. Uh, one main thing is that it is not ideal for huge data sets because each prediction requires processing of the complete training data. That is nothing but it has to calculate between the distance between each and every data. So if the data set becomes huge, then it will become a computationally very uh, costly. And also it does not work well with high dimensions. This is nothing but if there are n number of features, 
if the number of features are going to increase then also it doesn't work well and also for example if i say so uh, there is a feature scaling is required why it is because if there are features like which have very high differences in them then the data set uh, is a uh, very skewed then so in that case uh, uh, algorithm may not work properly and also we have to filter the uh, noises such as missing values and outliers we have to handle otherwise the accuracy of the knn algorithm will be harsh so this is about the disadvantages of the KNN algorithm. So now let us head to the Jupyter Notebook and discuss real world scenario using Python and its library. So here I have opened on Jupyter file. Uh, this is a KNN classification problem. So before that, uh, I have importing some pandas uh, and other libraries here for our understanding. So I have here, I have taken uh, Iris uh, data set, which is very simple. Uh, it, this data set is available from the SQLite library itself. So anyone can download and use it. So let us see the, what are the features available in the Iris data set. So Iris data set has a four features. That is nothing but sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width. Okay. These all are measured in a centimeter. So and tar targets are, there are three targets. That's Satosa, Versicolor, Virginica. So these are the target and there are four features. So let us see the data frame, how it looks. Okay. So I have read the data set in a data frame. So there are uh, four features, sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width. Okay. So the now target, there are three targets, zero, one and two. Okay. The first 50 belongs to the zero target. Second 50 belongs to the first target and the remaining belongs to the third target. Okay. So there are totally 150 uh, data set. Okay. So here I have imported a matplotlib to visualize the data. So here I have taken the sepal length versus sepal width. So to just to understand how the relation between the sepal width and sepal length. Sepal width I have taken uh, with a uh, green color and uh, sepal length I have taken with a uh, blue color. Okay. So you can see that uh, linearly the sepal length and sepal width are proportional. And another one is petal length and petal width. I have drawn this using the same matplotlib. And you can see that the green color uh, belongs to petal width and the blue color belongs to petal length. Uh, we, you can see that there is no such a uh, correlation between the petal width and petal length. modern selection. Here I have imported uh, from SQLearn uh, train test split. So this is to split the train data and test data. So the X is nothing but uh, the features. So I am draw, dropping the target variable and Y is nothing but the target. Okay. So now split the data X train, X test, Y train, Y test. That is nothing but train test split X comma Y is equal to test size is equal to 0 0.2. That is 20% of the data I have kept for the test size. Remaining 80% is for the training. So let us see the length of the X train. That is nothing but 120. Uh, remaining 20% uh, is for the test. That is nothing but the 30. Okay. Now let us build the model uh, using uh, K nearest neighbor classifier. For that, I have to import a library from SQLearn. Uh, that is nothing but K neighbors classifier. Uh, here I have taken a number of neighbors is equal to 10. Okay. So then I have fitted the model using X train and Y train data, which we have earlier splitted it. Okay. Then I have calculated the score of the data. Okay. It is showing me that 0 0.96, that is 96%. Okay. Now I wanted to predict what, uh, what is the output for a given input. Okay. As I said, there are four features, one, two, three, and four. Okay. I have 4.9, 3.0, 1.4, .4 and 0 0.2. These are the input. So when I mentioned these inputs and it is the model is telling that it is belong to the class zero. Okay. So for that, I have just to understand the better and to have the performance metrics, I have drawn the confusion metric for the given uh, my model. Okay, for better visualization, I have drawn with using the matplotlib. So the same confusion matrix is here. So this is the actual and this is the predictor one. Okay, these are the class 0, 1, 2. Okay, so this is similarly, this is the 0, 1, 2 is the classes. The network targets variable. Okay, so now let us see after all building the model. How our uh, model accuracy is okay. So you can see that the accuracy of the model is 0 0.97. That is 97 percent is the accuracy of the model. So this is how we can easily build a model and uh, test its uh, accuracy. And this is a KNN is a very easy to use and uh, simple algorithm to understand also. Thank you all.